Welcome to our devotional today. We are in the last part of Genesis chapter 13. Keep in mind Genesis 13 is all about Abraham, Abram and separation, how he not only separated from Egypt, which is a picture of the world, but also separated from Lot, who is a picture of the worldly believer. Now as we come into verses 14 through 18, I want you to notice today that after Abraham's separation, the covenant is revealed to him. In Genesis 13, verses 14 through 18, we find that covenant revealed. It says there in those verses, And the Lord said unto Abram, After that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land, in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. So as we look at these verses, we see the fact established that for Abraham and for all of us, blessing comes after separation. Many times people want the blessings of God upon their life, but they don't want to live a life of separation. They don't want to live a life of obedience. And verse 14 makes it very clear that the blessing came after separation. Too many today want all of God's rewards and blessings while they continue to live in unbelief and they continue to live like the world. And uh, there are those today who would say that to follow God, you'll miss out. And the truth of the matter is, Abraham did not lose by giving Lot first choice. Abraham was giving much compensation uh, in this matter. Uh, Abraham, in this passage, loses the presence of Lot, but he does not lose the presence of the Lord. And so many today... Um, choose the presence of certain people that they ought to be separating from. And the sad truth of the matter is they choose the presence of those people over the presence of the Lord. Now, I'm not saying that God leaves them. The Bible says that I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But friends, there's a difference between the mere presence of God and the manifest presence of God when we know that we are walking in fellowship with him. And we can't uh, avoid separation and avoid obeying him, and then expect that kind of his, of his presence being manifested in our lives. Notice the rich reward that Abraham got as a result of his separation. First of all, we see the extent of his reward in verses 14 and 15, where it says, The Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place which thou art, northward, southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed after thee. So we see there the extent of the uh, blessing that God gave him. And friends, that reminds us of the simple truth that no one gets shortchanged who follows the Lord. We are way better off with God's blessings in our life than we are in a situation like Lot, where he thought he had the best, but in reality he lost all that he had. And not only do we see the extent of the reward, we notice the recipients of the reward in verse 15, the end of the verse, when it says, to, thy, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. So this wasn't just a promise to Abraham because of his separation. This was a promise to his seed. This was a promise to the Jewish people, to, to those who would come along before him, or behind him rather, and it shows the magnitude of that offspring in verse 16. Notice what God tells him about the offspring. It says, And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. And of course, we know the reality of it. We can't really get uh, number the dust of the earth, but God is just saying how, how numerous the descendants of Abraham are going to be. And then notice the survey of the land in verse 17. It says, Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. One of the things that we're reminded as he's told to survey the land here is we are reminded of the simple truth that when God makes a promise that he always keeps it, that he is a God who keeps his word. Titus tells us in chapter 1 that God cannot lie, and uh, we need to be reminded that God is a God of truth, that his word is truth, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
and that as the Holy Spirit of God indwells us as believers, that he is the spirit of truth. So we see that God gave him some instruction. He gave him some direction on how Abram was supposed to live his life. And then with that instruction, with those precepts that God gave to Abraham, there was promises with those. And uh, we need to remember the simple truth that when we obey the precepts and we obey the commands of God, it simply enhances the promises and uh, reminds us of God's presence and God's power in our life. Friends, if all we, if, if it would do us, it would do you well every once in a while, you could take some time in your life to count the blessings that God has put into your life. You know, many times we're too busy complaining about the burdens and we forget that we need to count the blessings. And we will discover that we have more blessings than we realized if we would simply stop our complaining and begin to be grateful to God for the many blessings that he brought into your life. Count your blessings, name them one by one. The truth of the matter is, friend, when we begin to count the blessings of God, and we ought to count them individually, but God has blessed us in such a great way that sometimes you got to count them tongue by tongue instead of one by one. Oh, friends, what a wonderful truth it is that God has blessed us. And rather than focusing on those burdens and complaining about the burdens, take time to count the blessings and thank God for how he's been so good to you. And then we see the altar and worship in verse 18. It says, Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. So once again, we see Abram building this altar. Abram's situation was a most blessed one indeed. His worship here was a fitting token of thanksgiving to God for his blessings. Friends, when God blesses us, when God works on our behalf, we need to be careful that we take time to thank him for his goodness, thank him for his blessings, thank him for how he's been at work. There's no record whatsoever of Lot ever building an altar where he went. He was not interested in worship. He was only interested in wealth. And friends, those who have the same priorities as Lot will seldom be found in church worshiping. And the reason for that is simple. They're too busy making money to have time for God. But I, I, I warn you and I caution you, remember the love of money is the root of all evil and possessions are something that we will not take with us and not be able to take with us. And if we spend all of our time making money and living for the things of this world rather than living for God and giving him the time that we need to give him in our lives, let me assure you the day will come in your life as it did in the life of Lot when you will loathe your priorities and lose everything that you sought in your priorities. Friends, it's so important that we be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, that we live a way that honors and pleases him. It's interesting to contrast Abram with Lot. Abram was a man who walked by faith. Lot was a man who walked by faith, by sight rather. Abram was noble in spirit and he was generous and Lot was grasping and greedy and worldly. Abraham was a man who looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. Lot looked for a city built by a man that was destroyed by God. Abraham was a father of all believers, and Lot was the typical backslider of the ages. Romans 4.13 tells us that Abram was made heir of the world, but lost, Lot lost all of his possessions and wound up dwelling in a cave, according to Genesis chapter 19. And verse 30. Friends, let me ask you today, as we bring Genesis 13 to, into a close, who is a closer type of your life? Who's a closer pattern of your life and what you're living for? Is it Abram or is it Lot? Are you living by faith or are you living by sight? Are you noble in spirit and generous or are you one who is greedy and worldly? Are you living for eternity and the world that is to come there or are you living for all that you can get right now? And uh, friends, it's important for us to understand that only one that one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And friends, when we just simply lay up earthly treasures, there will be absolutely no eternal reward, and we'll not be able to take those eternal treasures with you. Let me encourage you: don't walk by faith, walk by sight, and keep your eyes fixed on that which is eternal. With eternity's values in view, Lord, with eternity's values in view. May I do each day's work for Jesus with eternity's values in view. I hope that's your prayer.
and I hope that's your desire, and I hope, friend, that's the way that you live your life. Have a great day.